All right, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me for today's session. Our topic today is how to open or reopen the fiscal year in asset accounting. Obviously a very timely topic since uh, most of you probably have just closed the fiscal year. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Thomas Michael. Been in the SAP world for over 20 years and I'm the CEO of the Michael Management Corporation. We're a leading provider of online SAP training and education. I'm also an ASUG volunteer. I'm the market leader for asset accounting. So anything related to asset accounting, uh, you can always reach out to me. I speak a lot, I write a lot. And if you ever have any questions about either this session or anything else that's related to asset accounting or SAP training education, always feel free to reach out to me. Here's my email address. Um, so today is going to be a real short session. We have uh, less than 30 minutes allocated to this. Um, we'll distribute the slides to everyone at the end of the session. If you have any questions, no need to hold them till the end of the session. Just feel free to ask, either raise your hands or type them into the chat box. I'll try to answer as many questions as we can in the next 25 minutes we have. So what are you going to get out of this session if you sit through it till the very end? Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the year in closing and asset accounting, give a quick overview why it's so important. And then I'll discuss the two ways how we can reopen the fiscal year for asset accounting. And most importantly, we'll also talk about how do you get it closed after you reopen it and do a quick summary and that's it. So if you have any questions, again, ask them throughout the session. And with that, Let's hop right into the overview. So it's assuming that you're in a calendar year, you just went through the whole process of closing the fiscal year and hopefully that went well. Um, for those of you that have not closed the year yet or were thinking about skipping it or you had some errors and you just chose to ignore it, uh, let me just tell you that's a bad idea because this can and most likely will result in several issues. Um, biggest thing, obviously, is you can have reconciliation problems. So if your sub-ledger says one number, but your general ledger says a different number, you have a reconciliation problem between your two ledgers. And that can happen when you don't close the year properly. And if that happens, you have now a SOX non-compliance issue. Big, big no-no, obviously, and auditors don't like that. Uh, if you choose to leave that non-compliance issue in place, you will set yourself up for rec recalculation differences, meaning that the asset subledger will recalculate depreciation not just for the current fiscal year, but also for the last fiscal year since it's still open. And that will eventually lead to data inconsistencies or worst case scenario data losses. I've worked with many, many clients where uh, a, a bad situation got worse and led to full data loss. So uh, skipping the year in close in asset accounting or not doing it properly is really a bad situation that you want to avoid. Um, the problem is SAP does not force you to close the fiscal year in asset accounting. You can skip the year in close for asset accounting, but you can only do that for one year. Because if you, if you just skipped it, going from 2016 into 2017, that's fine. SAP allows it. But at the end of this year, at the end of 2017, you will not be able to open 2018 until you have closed 2016. All right. So if you skipped this, this year in closing right now, you will not be, open to, will not be able to open 2018. By then it's really too late to close 2016 without any uh, you know, adjustment postings into a prior year. So that becomes very, very difficult and very ugly. So try to avoid this. Make sure you have closed your fiscal year properly. Now, so the question, of course, is, well, if it's so difficult to close the year, why would I ever want to reopen it? All right. Well, there's two scenarios when that could happen. And the first one is really very shortly after you close the fiscal year, basically right now, right? So you just went through the year and close, you buttoned everything up, 
and then somebody comes in with some last minute transactions, maybe a late invoice that, that you know you just didn't get around to posting, but it really needs to go back into December. Uh, or you know maybe the settlement run wasn't done or it needs to be redone because that late, late invoice was posted. Or maybe there's some late asset transactions, some retirements or something that you know they really should have been posted in December. You didn't get around to doing this, but they're significant and material enough. Um, so this this could happen and happens very frequently, right? And SAP. The good news is SAP gives you an option to handle this, right? So shortly after year in closing, you suddenly realize you need to reopen the fiscal year. So that's one scenario. The other scenario is long after you close the fiscal year, right? It could be months and months. Could even you know could be a year or even more, right? And those are situations that fall in these categories. You know, the most common one are tax adjustments, right? So the tax department always works with a half year lag. So in late summer, most tax departments will suddenly have some tax adjustments that need to be posted. Where they say, well, we went through all the asset activity for last year, we analyzed it, maybe something was misclassified, and here are some adjustments we need to post now. Uh, or maybe the auditors came in and they found something that just wasn't right and you need to post some audit adjustments. Or you found reconciliation issues, data inconsistencies, that kind of nature. The point is, these are situations that happen long after you close the original fiscal year. And again, the good news is SAP allows you to handle these um, through, through a different reopening of the fiscal year. So let's look at the first scenario where we can reopen an entire company code. It looks like this. So the transaction for that is OAAQ. That's the transaction code. If you go in there, it looks just like my little screenshot there. You see all the company codes. And for each company code, you see the last closed fiscal year. So had I used a more up-to-date screenshot, it would say 2016 in that last closed fiscal year now. So you can use this transaction to open up the entire company code. Okay, so this is the situation that you typically use right after the, the fiscal year was closed. So basically now, right? If somebody says, oh, here's a late invoice that we need to post, can you open up that company code again? This is what you would use for that. Now, when you use this and you open up the year, remember that this will open up all depreciation areas for this company code. And then also, the interesting part about this is you can go back as far as you want to. You, 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 know, you could go back into 2003, like I'm showing here on this screenshot. So you're not just limited to go back one year. You can go back as far as you want to. And remember that this applies to the company code in asset accounting only. This has nothing to do with the year-end close in the general ledger. Okay, So that's a separate setting. So does this make sense? Any questions for this scenario where we open up the fiscal year for the entire company code? If you have a question, simply type it into your question box or the chat box, or you can raise your hand if you want to speak. Okay, so that's the first scenario. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. So you open up the fiscal year for the entire company code, and now you can post your adjustments, whatever it, whatever it is. Okay. Second scenario is where we open up not the entire company code, we open up certain depreciation areas. So this is the situation that happens long after you close the original fiscal year. All right, and let's say the tax department comes in and says, you know what, we need to make some tax adjustments. So in that case, you don't want to open up the entire company code because your book areas, your financial book areas are fine. They should not change anymore. So in that situation, you only want to open up selected depreciation areas, for example, only the tax depreciation areas, so that you can then make an adjustment to tax only without any impact to the book areas. So this is easy to do with this transaction code, OAAR. 
what you do is you select the company code first and then you can select the depreciation areas and set the year back to whatever you want. Notice though, this one is a little different here. You can also go back as far as you want to, but the difference between depreciation areas can only be one year. So, so make sure you really think about this. That's a big limitation. So for example, if we're you know, right now, this would say 2016 for all depreciation areas. And if the tax department says, oh, we need to make an adjustment into last year for federal tax purposes, you can then pick area 10, that's the federal tax area typically, and you can go back and set the year to 2015. All right, so the last closed fiscal year would be 2015, meaning 2016 is open for you to make adjustments into the, uh, into the tax area. Now, if the tax department would say, well, we need to go back another year, we need to make an adjustment into 2015, all right, so you would have to go back two years, not just one, two years, that is not allowed. So that's a, that's a big limitation, that's something to keep in mind. If you have a situation like this, you actually need a custom consulting solution. So we've done this a lot with, with other clients where the tax department or whatever the adjustment reason was had to be done two or more years back. Um, it's possible, but not with this standard transaction. So you need a little bit of a custom solution for that. So keep that in mind. If there are any adjustments, the more timely you post these adjustments, the better. Okay. All right, any questions for this application or this scenario? All right. Then let's move on. So then the next question, of course, is, okay, so now that we open up the fiscal year, either for the entire company code or for just selected depreciation areas, we got our adjustment postings in or our recalculations or whatever we had to do. Question now, of course, is well, how do we close the year again? So one thing to keep in mind is these two transactions that I've just given you, OAAQ and OAAR, neither one of them can be used to close the fiscal year. In other words, you cannot roll the year forward with these transactions. You can only go backwards. Okay. So the only way that you can close the fiscal year in asset accounting is going through the normal year and closing steps. And a few of you probably were in our session just a few weeks ago where we went through our 12-step year and close process. All right, so closing the fiscal year in asset accounting is a pretty involved and complex series of transactions. Um, and you will have to go through maybe not all of these steps, but at least several of them. At a very minimum, you would have to run the AJABS, AJAB transaction to close the fiscal year in asset accounting. But that's probably not all the transactions. There's probably others that you have to run too, depending on what kind of adjustments you had to make. Also, the very important thing that I want to stress here is when you run AJAB, if it reports any errors, You'll have to fix these errors before you can actually close the year. So the most common errors that AJAB would report is not all depreciation has been posted or there was an error in depreciation calculation. Those are the two top errors that you see when you run AJAB. Uh, don't ignore these errors because if you do, the, the year is actually not closed. Right? The system will not close the year if these two errors happen. Right? You need to fix whatever errors are, are shown, and then run AJAB in update mode to really close the fiscal year. All right, so that is all I had to share with you guys. Just a quick summary. So something to remember is opening the fiscal year in asset accounting is really easy, right? So there's these two transactions that I've just shown you uh, it's very simple to open the year, but keep in mind, closing the year is not that simple. Um, you can open the year for an entire company code or just for selected depreciation areas. Typically, 
you only want to open the entire company code shortly after you actually close the fiscal year to get some late adjustments in, whereas you want to open select the depreciation areas, for example, the tax areas, for things like audit adjustments or tax adjustments that happen months and months after the original year and close. To close the year, you cannot use the same transactions that you just used to open the year. To close the year, you need to run through the actual year and closing steps again. And if any errors are reported, you need to fix them before you can close the year and before they become major issues. It's always easier to, to fix these errors right now if you decide not to do that and say, oh, we'll take care of it later or maybe next year. Uh, that might not happen, right? You might not be able to do that. So if any errors are reported, get on them and fix them right away. And that is all I had to share with you today. I hope that was useful. Do you guys have any questions? Now would be a good time to ask. Again, you can type it into your chat box or raise your hand. And if you cannot think of a question now, that's okay. You can always send me an email, tmichael at michaelmanagement.com, and I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. So thanks so much for joining us. I hope this was useful, and I'll hope to see you at one of our next webinars. Bye.